Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss the second part of the myelodosis video. In the first part we studied about the general features, the introduction and the physical characteristics and the pathogenesis of the myelodosis. Now going to the staining characteristics of the amyloid. Firstly, staining on the gross specimen. Whenever we get a gross specimen in which amyloidosis is suspected, we stain it with Lugol's iodine which imparts a mahogany brown color to the myeloid deposit which on further addition of sulfuric acid turns blue in color. This was test for the gross specimen. Now going to the microscopy. Microscopy we should know that on H and E section the amyloid appears eosinophilic in color. That is a that is not a specific test because all proteins they stain pink in color. So we have to go for Congo red staining in which it appears pinkish red in color. And further when these sections are viewed under the polarized light they exhibit a apple green bifringence. This is a specific test to identify the amyloid in the tissue sections. Now going to the metachromatic stains. These are stains like methyl violet and crystal violet. They react with the amyloid to give a rose pink color. Like we can see in the picture, it gives a very beautiful rose pink color to the amyloid deposits. Now going to the fluorescent stains. These can also be used like thioflavin T and thioflavin S. And this, when seen under UV light, it imparts a yellow fluorescence. A specific test used can be immunohistochemistry. This test can be like anti-AA, anti-AL antibodies can be used and on IHC it will bind to the myeloid and will be seen. This is a test in vivo Congo red test. This is a test which was used earlier but now is obsolete. In this Intravenous injection of Congo red dye of a known quantity to was given to the patient and then dye gets bind to the amyloid deposits and then the serum level of the le uh, dye are decreased. This is not used because it is non-specific and also has a risk of anaphylaxis. Now next test is SAP scanning. In this iodine 123 labeled SAP is injected in the body. And 24 hour retention of iodine 123 is visualized. SAP is higher in patients with the amyloidosis. Also, we can see one more advantage is we can see the distribution of the organ involvement. As seen in the picture, it gets concentrated where the amyloid is present. This was the staining characteristics. Now, going to the which tissues we will use for the biopsy for the study. First and the most commonly used is subcutaneous fat aspiration. It's very easy to obtain this tissue and it provides enough material for all of the investigations. Also we can use rectal biopsy, gums, bone marrow aspiration. Other tissues are very rarely used and are used in autopsies to confirm the diagnosis and if there is a nephrotic syndrome in the patient, we can use kidney biopsy to determine the cause. Now going to the morphological features of amyloidosis of various organs. Firstly, we should know that uh, after, uh, all the organs have some features in common. They have some journal features which are common grossly. Each organ which we will study will be large, grey, vexy and rubbery and have, will have a firm consistency. And on microscopy these deposits will be extracellular as we studied in the earlier video that amyloid is always extracellular and appears amorphous and eosinophilic. Now going to the each organ amyloidosis of the kidney. This is most commonly involved and is serious. Why? Because in this the patient suffers from the nephrotic syndrome. In this grossly in earlier stages the kidneys may be normal in size whereas they will be enlarged in the later stages. On in the cut section it will be pale, vexy and translucent. 
on microscopy we should know that amyloid deposits primarily in the glomeruli other tissues are also involved in the kidney but glomeruli is most commonly involved now this is a cross picture showing the kidneys they are enlarged in size and have a vexy hue to it and in the microscopy we can see a glomeruli which is pinkish in color that means the amyloid it has been deposited there now also in glomeruli we should remember that it begins in the mesangium and there are interlacing ribbons of the amyloid which are seen which we know that on h and e section will be seen as amorphous eosinophilic and on congruent staining it will be pinkish red that we can add in an answer when we are writing a theoretical answer we can add other uh, staining characteristics also now going to the myelodosis of the spleen. A myelodosis of the spleen has two patterns. This is very important as per the undergraduate examinations that there are two patterns. There is one known as sago spleen. Second is known as the lardaceous spleen. What is the sago spleen? In this the amyloid it is deposited and is limited to the splenic follicles and therefore the gross appearance of the spleen will be like it is dotted with the gray nodules this is the picture we can see on the cut section the second picture we can see there are white nodules this is the area where the myeloid has deposited and this resembles to the sago grain now going to the lardaceous spleen now what is lard lard is the fat from the abdomen of the pig and is used in some regions for cooking now Amyloid here deposits not in the splenic follicles but it deposits in the red pulp sinuses and produces a spleen which looks like uh, it is covered with the vexy discoloration and have a map like involvement. This, is, uh, this resembles to lard so it is known as lardaceous spleen. Now going to the myelodosis of the liver. Grossly we know every organ it will be enlarged, pale, vexy and firm. And here it initially deposits in the space of Desse. What is space of Desse? It is a space between the hepatocytes and the endothelial cells. Okay. Now going to the when there will be lot of myeloid deposited then there will be pressure. And therefore due to pressure atrophy there can be disappearance of the hepatocytes. Now this picture shows hepatocytes and we can see a pink deposit which is going, this is a myeloid. Now going to the myelodosis of the heart. Heart is involved in systemic myelodosis. In this the heart will be enlarged and firm and we can see this deposits in the epicardium, endocardium, valves. And microscopically it will be seen around every myocardial fiber in a ring form which is therefore also these are known as ring fibers. Now going to the brain. We know in brain we as we discussed in the previous video that Alzheimer's disease, neurodegenerative disorders and prion disease these all involve the brain. They are a family of a disease in which there is misfolding of the protein Therefore, amyloid is present. Now, we can detect amyloid plaques and neurofibrillary tangles which will enable us the identification of Alzheimer's disease. Now, this picture shows neurofibrillary tangles in the Alzheimer's disease. Other organs can also be involved like elementary canal. Elementary canal can be involved from the oral cavity to the anus. And we can see these deposits are initially present in the vessel wall and then it goes to the layers of the bubble wall. Also very important finding in amyloidosis patient is macroglossia. This, this is also asked as a PG question. That in amyloidosis what will happen to tongue? Tongue will be increased in size and this is known as macroglossia. Thank you for watching it. Please like and subscribe. And do ask any queries regarding the topic. Thank you.